Hey everyone, it's Andy, and today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of the HTC Desire 526, which is a very new, very budget-friendly smartphone that's currently available for Verizon. I picked mine up yesterday at Walmart for $80, and I've been using it for about the past 36 hours, so I just wanted to give you some first impressions on what you can expect from this phone if you decide to get it, and help you make the decision if this should be your next smartphone. So let's take a look. All right, so we're just gonna get started by taking a look at the outside of the phone. On the front, you'll see that there are no capacitive or physical buttons, so it's all on screen, just like Google likes. The most noticeable thing, or at least what caught my eye right off the bat, are the symmetrical speaker grills at the top and the bottom of the phone. There is no stereo sound coming out of those. The top one is for phone calls. The bottom one is your media speaker. The other noticeable thing about the front of the phone is the raised screen that is actually raised above the rest of the front of the phone. I can't say it's bothered me, and I haven't had a phone like this, so I think it's something that's distinctive and adds a little bit of character, which is not a bad thing when you're talking about a budget smartphone. Taking a look at the sides of the phone, it is all this glossy black plastic, which for the most part looks okay now. It does pick up fingerprints, and I'm sure it will get scuffed up with regular use, but hey, it looks okay right now. Um, at the top of the phone, we have the headphone jack, which I prefer on the bottom, but that is just a preference, so to each their own. On the bottom, we do have this micro USB port for charging, and then on the right side of the phone, we have the power button close to the middle, and then the volume rocker above that. These buttons look pretty chintzy, pretty crappy, but they actually work really well. I haven't had any trouble adjusting to those buttons, so kudos to HTC on that. If we move to the back of the phone, we have matte black plastic all the way across the back, and when you first get the phone, it's an incredible fingerprint magnet. The best advice I can give you is to resist the urge to wipe away those fingerprints because the best thing you can do is just let it keep accumulating fingerprints and eventually you get this you know, sort of patina almost on the back which makes the phone softer and grippier. It's almost like a soft touch back and it reduces the fingerprint problem considerably. So do not wipe fingerprints off the back. You're just gonna prolong the inevitable. Just let them collect and in no time, you won't notice them anymore. On the other thing on the back, we've got the camera and the flash. I like the way that HTC puts them symmetrically, so hey, kudos. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the screen on now, and let's just talk about the screen itself. So we'll just open up some pictures, and so the screen is 960 by 540, which is basically the bare minimum for a modern smartphone. Uh, I can't say I really mind the resolution that much. It helps with performance on these lower-end devices, and I would be lying if I said I noticed very often the resolution difference between this and the you know QHD screen I had on the Galaxy S6. I mean, the sharpness is not something that I really notice very often. The thing that is noticeable are the colors. Uh, the colors on this screen are quite washed out, uh, really everywhere. The viewing angles are not great. The colors sort of warm up whenever you tilt the display at all which is not ideal, but again, not really a deal breaker because the one thing that the screen does do well is perform outdoors in direct sunlight. This phone is about as viewable as it gets outside in direct sunlight, which is pretty important, especially on a value phone. So yeah, the screen is not great, but you know, it's a, it's a value phone, so you're getting what you pay for there. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about performance. As you can see, I'm running the Google Now launcher, which I just prefer. I tried the new version of Sense and just could not really get used to it. So I went to Google Now and it's been doing well for me. Performance, let's open the app drawer. Just moving around, things go, you know, pretty snappily. The biggest performance issues I've seen on this phone and just to get out of the way, it does have a quad core 1.1 gigahertz processor. I think it's like the, the equivalent of the Qualcomm Snapdragon S210 which is a pretty outdated processor, but it mostly does okay. It keeps up, you know, things like scrolling through Instagram, that kind of stuff. The biggest issue I've noticed on the phone is oftentimes when you're first opening an app that it will take a while. Let's get a news app open. It can take a while to load an app that you haven't had just open right away. The phone does have 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, so it actually does okay in terms of holding on to apps that have been opened but it seems really slow when you first open an app. So the performance is, I'd say, 
incredibly usable all around, but don't expect to be jumping through a ton of apps quickly. Okay, well, on the same vein as performance, uh, we should take a look at gaming on the phone. So the only, you know, demanding at all game that I have installed right now is Skyforce 2014, which you're looking at footage of right now. And I love this game. It's a great game to just waste some time, just, you know, an old school sort of space shooter. And it does okay on the phone. Um, it definitely drops frames compared to flagship and probably even, you know, the slightly higher end, you know, mid-ish range sort of Moto G caliber phones. But it's playable and that's all you can ask. So really the bigger issue that I have when it comes to gaming on this phone, at least right now, is the fact that the phone only has eight gigabytes of memory on it. And, you know, straight out of the box, a little under three gigabytes are accessible. So if we go look at the settings, I am, you know, I don't have a ton of apps on this phone. I have almost no pictures on it right now. And you can see that I am already at like 7.2 gigabytes out of eight. So I'm probably gonna remove Skyforce right after this review because it takes up a bunch of space and you do not have a lot of space to futz around. The good news, the back of the phone does have, um, you can take the back off and there is a micro SD slot. So at some point, probably this week, I will be adding a micro SD card to give me a little more space. And that's really necessary. The phone would, that would almost be a deal breaker without the micro SD slot. Okay, so also performance related is going to be the Wi-Fi and cell performance on this. So this has been probably the most pleasant surprise of this phone is that the Wi-Fi performance is pretty excellent. So, or at least in terms of range, speeds, I don't really know. But the range, I've noticed I actually get, I can connect to networks that I used to be really borderline on with my Galaxy S6. And with this phone today, I've been able to connect and get, you know, a solid one to two bars, which isn't a lot, but that's better than like not connected to maybe one bar. So I've been impressed with the Wi-Fi performance. As far as cell goes, obviously just moving from T-Mobile to Verizon, there's going to be a jump there. Um, I just did one speed test on LTE today at lunch, and I got, I think, around 22 megabits per second down, which is plenty for me. That's that's fast. So I would say the networking performance on the phone is very good. I've been very impressed with that so far. The other thing that's impressed me the most on the phone, at least compared to the Galaxy S6, which is notorious for this problem, is the battery life. So I took my phone off the charger at about 6.30 this morning. It's almost 9 right now. I've used it quite a bit today. I've been streaming music from Google Play Music, you know, for about two hours total. Um, I've been using it throughout the day. Probably, uh, I can't view actual screen time on, on this, or at least I couldn't find it. But I would estimate, you know, probably close to three hours of screen on, maybe two to three, um, somewhere in that range. And I'm at 58% on the battery right now. So I've been very impressed with the battery life, especially with the Galaxy S6. I was having to charge that thing, you know, two to two and a half times a day, basically, just to keep it going until I went to bed. So battery life is very good. And so the last thing to really talk about on this phone or any phone is, of course, the camera. And HTC has just an awful reputation on cameras right now. And so I had very low expectations coming in on this, but that's okay. Cause I normally, I carry around a dedicated camera and the camera on this phone is not, not as bad as I was expecting. The software is definitely slow, uh, which is probably the biggest bummer about the camera, but honestly, the pictures and you've been seeing some now, the pictures, honestly, you know, they're not that bad. I was expecting them to be truly awful from what I've read about HTC cameras and especially for an $80 off contract phone. But you know, under good lighting conditions, these are pictures I would be totally fine posting to Instagram or Facebook. So pictures are fine. All right. So with all of that said, it really comes down to issuing, you know, sort of a final verdict on the phone. And basically, I'll just lay it out simply. I love the way the phone is built. I like the form factor. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels in my hand. Uh, performance isn't great, but honestly, I think it's fine for day-to-day -day usage, unless you're planning on playing a ton of games and just hopping around a ton of different stuff. Um, the biggest downside right out of the box is the storage, but since there is a micro SD port underneath the back of the phone, uh, you can expand that storage without any real issues at all. So I think it's certainly a phone worthy of consideration, and none of its faults, whether it's the screen or the storage, anything like that, 
is enough to really make it a deal breaker at this price point. So if you're looking for a Verizon phone under 100 bucks, take a look at it because it's not bad.